DFS management, referrals and how to prevent users from losing their work while you do maintenance on one of your DFS servers. Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today I'm going to show you how you can prevent interrupting your users uh, working with their normal documents and folders while you perform a maintenance tasks on one of your DFS servers in your environment. So for this scenario I have two file servers that I've configured a DFS uh, replication and a DFS namespace for a shared folder that is located uh, under a partition that I've created on every single server and uh, that shared folder is called shared data and you can see that my namespace uh, uh, contains uh, this shared data folder and it's currently residing on my file 01 and file 02 so if I switch to my file 02 and open my um, my file management I will see that I have the shared e shared data here as well so if you want to know how I configured the uh, namespace and the replication for the folder you can check out my last video of how you can configure the DFS uh, in your environment I will share a link um, right here in this corner so you can click it and see it's a really um, detailed video where you can find out how to configure everything so I just want to um, test out and see if the replication is working and I'm going to create two shared folders one called marketing for my marketing department and the other one will be sales for my sales department I'm going to create a new text document um, on both marketing and sales and if I switch over to my other server I will see that I have the marketing and sales and the text documents um, right where I've configured on my first server so just test out that both ways of the replication is working I will just add some data and save the document here as well okay and if I go to my first server and open the marketing I'll see that I have marketing document information written in the file and sales document written in the file as well so I confirm that uh, both ways my replication is working and um, the next step that I'm going to show you and the really important part is that uh, we're going to speak about in this video is the uh, namespace in general so uh, I've configured a single namespace and this is the top root folder of my namespace of course you can have multiple um, folders beneath the root folder but just simple up things I just made a single one so I can show you how you can um, for example stop a target server stop a namespace server not to offer itself to clients while you do maintenance on it and the main key is the referral the referral basically is um, a key within DFS that refers the namespace server to the clients using the DFS and what I mean by refer itself is the referral and the DFS works with uh, in conjunction with uh, Active Directory and um, uh, to be more detailed active directory sites and services so depending on where your file server is located for example if you have a main office like me and a branch office and you have two file servers one file server is residing on the main office and one is residing on the branch office all users that are using the file server in the branch office uh, will uh, be referred with the branch office because the if you configured correctly your logical infrastructure in your active directory and you configured your sites and services correctly linking your 
uh, subnet to the proper site and if I switch to my domain controller really fast so I can show you and open sites and services okay you will see that I have a single subnet which is currently linked to my main office but you can have multiple subnets here that are linked to different sites that you have different physical sites because this is the logical representation of your physical environment and uh, you can have I have only a main site main office that contains two file servers so all of my users will be referred to one of the file servers and it will be a 50 50 chance but if you configured everything properly in your sites and services all of the branch users should be referred to your branch office file server for the documents and all the main users uh, all the main site users will be referred to the main site file server and they will all access the um, file share through the um, namespace that you configured right above for with me it's shared data in my example so what I'm going to do for example um, let's jump into my client machine that I have and let's map if I open settings map network drive I'm going to map my namespace my shared folder lab.com and then shared data to the user and here you can see the user is currently able to see marketing with the text document inside it and the sales with the text doc document inside it and if I right click here and open properties I will see that I have a DFS tab right right above if I click here you will see that uh, under the DFS tab I can see that currently referral for the user that I'm using is NLB502 and you can confirm this by checking the if the the referral is active or is it not active you can check the status of course on both referrals or if you want you can switch to set active to the other one it won't make any change it won't make any difference for the user because as you know I'm currently using DFS repli replication to replicate the data on both servers so the user should not experience any difference uh, being referred to the NLB uh, file 01 or NLB file 02 so what I'm going to do is let's say for example I want to do some maintenance tasks on NLB 501 and the best way to do it for example is if you configure the settings in the evening and leave it overnight or if the users if your users are shutting down their computers it would be even better because if you configure the DFS not to refer itself it would need some time to uh, populate to every single machine and most probably in some cases will require a restart after the restart is done the um, DFS and the mapping on the users will automatically pick up the available referral and the users will continue to work so I'm going to switch now to my one of my DFS servers I'm going to disable uh, the referral for file 1 and let's see what will happen to the user okay now that I'm on my file server 01 I'm going to right click you need to select the namespace go to the namespace servers tab right click on the referral and you can disable the namespace server so the namespace will not be uh, populated and not be referred to the users from now on and you can use easily re-enable that if you right click and enable namespace server so it will need some time to replicate the changes replicate everything and push to the user saying that this namespace server is not available and um, what I'll do is I'll switch to my um, client machine and we'll do a fast restart on it after the restart I'm going to resume the video and let's see if the user will be able to browse the namespace without any issues okay now that my computer fully booted once again 
I'm going to open the my com uh, the file explorer, go to this PC, and I can see that I have the shared data right where I mapped it the last time. So I'm going to open that, and I'm able to successfully browse and open documents, even edit documents. Let's save that. Edit documents onto the uh, share, and if I right click, open properties and open the DFS tab, I will see now that I have only NOB502 which is currently active. If I check the status, it will say that the status is OK and currently this is the only referral that I have available for the share. So let's switch back to the server and you can see that uh, the referral status is still disabled. So I'm going to re-enable the namespace server. I'm going to do another restart on the machine. I want to see and verify that after the maintenance is done, I will still be able to see both referred servers to me. So let's do another restart on the machine. Okay, my PC has restarted once again. And I'm going to open the file explorer and browse to this PC. The shared data is now available for me. And if I right click and click properties, I will see under the DFS tab that now I have two referred um, file servers. And even my file 01 is picking up the uh, active status. So now um, I have successfully resumed the DFS uh, referral and both servers are being referred to my users. So I just want to double check and see what will happen if I, uh, for example, if we do a restart on or shutdown, if something happens to the server, how will the DFS react to it? So let's shut down the server. Okay, let's switch to my user and if I try to, if I double click to one of the folders, you can see that uh, everything is freezing up and uh, the users are not able to work with the referral that they have at the moment. But let's see if DFS would be able to successfully swap out the referral to the second server so that the users can continue working with their um, shared folders. So we should wait for a few moments and see if that would happen. Right on the top you can see that it's saying that it's not responding at the moment. Okay, after thinking about it for, let's say, 20 seconds in my case, I can see that I have the shared data available now as well. So if I open the properties and open the DFS tab, I will see that currently the active referral is file 2. And if I check the status, it will say that it's okay. If I check the first one, it will try to look for the server, but it will say that it's unavailable. And you can see that uh, the built-in mechanism in DFS, it's allowing me to automatically swap between the referrals if one of the referrals is not available. So using the namespace, you have two options. You can see unreachable right here. Using the namespace, you have two options. One is to configure the server to disable the namespace beforehand so you can work normally um, with the server, update it and then enable 
the namespace so it can continue to operate normally like before. That way the users won't experience any downtime and if you decide or if you forget to do it, um, using the DFS namespace should allow and should swap over to the available within 30 seconds to one minute it should swap to the next available server and the users can continue to operate normally if the replication occurred both ways the users will be able to browse their documents and there shouldn't be any data loss but using the um, the first method it's I really I really think is the better method because you will know for sure that no of the users are currently connected to your server while you are working on it. So this is a small overview of how to configure your DFS to have um, resilience while you do some maintenance tasks on one of the um, one of your DFS name name servers namespace servers or replica uh, replicated. Um, folders using the DFS replicated folder servers. So if you have any questions you can always ask them in the uh, comments below and I will try, try to answer them. And if you like the video you can always subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. If you don't like it press the dislike button and tell me what can be improved or what did I miss in a video. So thank you very much for viewing and see you soon friends.